welcome to the course environmental impact assessment and uh, in today's class we are going to cover methods for health impact assessment under the larger ambits of methods under EIA. So for this particular session we are referring to chapter 16 of the book Methods of Environmental and Social Impact Assessment by Ricky Terrible and Graham Wood. And uh, accordingly, our coverage will include that we're going to look at uh, the concerns related with human health risk assessments. And then we'll look at uh, key definitions and concepts involved in this. How do we understand the overall concept about health? And then uh, we'll look at uh, how uh, one undertakes EIA in this particular domain and how it overlaps and integrates with the other domain of EIA. Then uh, we will look at various other concepts which are involved like uh, where do you really perform the study? So the concept of inside fence and outside the fence. And then we'll look at uh, different stages of uh, EIA pertaining to health. So uh, the screening and scoping and then how do we asset, undertake assessment for health and then what are the mitigation measures and then the human health a risk assessment, how do we undertake that? So uh, accordingly, the learning outcome, expected learning outcome after completion of this particular session is that you should be able to uh, review and discuss the changing perspective in human health uh, risk assessments. And then you should be able to define uh, and conceptually explain various uh, terms used and concepts used. And then you should be able to also make judgments how you have to go about this particular domain and then uh, related with decision making about whom to engage and then where all the study has to be conducted. Then uh, also your ability to decide what will be done um, in the uh, screening stage, scoping stage and how what kind of methods are available to you for the assessment of health as well as what steps are taken for mitigation purpose and then you'll be able to tell the key aspects of human health risk assessment. So looking at the uh, concepts of human health uh, risk assessments, so uh, wherever you'll see in practice, uh, whenever we do it uh, concerning EIA, physical aspects are given much more significance uh, even though they are uh, indirectly connected with health. So wherever the impact is concerned, you will look at what really happens uh, uh, to the physical health about the environment. Uh, so uh, you see that uh, initially the emphasis was more on the physical aspect of the environment, but later we see that the concern shifted towards the socio-economic, institutional and other aspects of health uh, also determinants also in the area of health impact assessment. If you see that we have uh, in the beginning of the class, we had seen all the timelines when we covered NEPA and everything. So the initial emphasis was on the health. When uh, the environmental risk uh, uh, aspect came up, we were more concerned about what threat it has on the human health. But in practice, uh, more emphasis was actually to the physical part of the environment and less was uh, really concerned about the health. Though there's another perspective which says that uh, if one takes care of the environment, it would really take care of the health. Uh, but uh, health is said to be a significant part of EIA. Uh, we, we see that irrespective of how this entire EIA came up, still biophysical uh, has more emphasis in the EIA process. And uh, we see that uh, it is indirectly contributing towards the health uh, benefits. So we say that uh, it was in 1970s and 80s, uh, there were certain health disasters, uh, like you can see Love Canal and Bhopal gas tragedy, uh, that public health was given attention. So it was um, uh, that time that public health had uh, got weightage. So from then, our exposure, uh, uh, we started looking at what kind of exposure we have to the toxic chemicals, uh, whenever the development is happening uh, and what kind of development is happening and what kind of exposure will happen. 
So uh, I've given you the link to the documentary movies which you can see pertaining to this, to the uh, about the Love Canal project. Then you can also look at the Bhopal gas tragedy. So it was this time um, uh, with this incidences that we actually started to focus on the health aspect in EIA. So. Um, uh, so, initial tool for assessments we see in human health risk assessments, HHRA, uh, within EIA, EIA uh, framework. Um, this helps us to um, evaluate various health hazards, what kind of health hazards are there. So, human health uh, risk assessment, uh, th this would, when you do undertake health assessment, it will tell you the likelihood. Uh, of uh, whatever exposure is happening to you, series of exposure, and what kind of damage it is doing to you already or is likely to do on individual's health. So that is what is done in human health risk assessment. And uh, human risk assessment is said to be a process where you estimate uh, the kind of impact which will happen, the nature of impact, then you also look at the probability of that impact. So what nature of impact will happen and what is the probability that that impact would happen uh, on your health and especially when we are dealing with human health risk assessments it is confined uh, more focused on chemicals uh, contaminant in the environmental media. So uh, broadly speaking human health risk assessment uh, has four steps uh, which begins with planning. So here you have a step one where you have hazard identification. You try to find out what hazard is there. Then you also look at step two, dose response assessment. So you see that what kind of, for what dosage, what kind of response happens from the human uh, receivers. And then you uh, undertake exposure assessment to what exposure uh, what kind of impact will happen and then you categorize all the risk. So that is what you do here. These are the key four steps you see. And uh, we also find like apart from this uh, uh, human health risk assessment, you also find health impact assessment, HIA tool, uh, which is developed by um, uh, WHO. And uh, it is uh, from the perspective of uh, health assessment. So uh, health impact assessment, HIA, is said to be a practical approach and where you judge the potential health effects of uh, not only just the chemicals, but about the policies, programs or the projects, uh, what kind of impact it will have on the people and uh, especially on the vulnerable or the disadvantaged groups. So th that is what uh, health impact assessment tool uh, by WHO helps you to look into. So in this image, you can see um, graphical presentation of the tool. You can see different phases of process, steps, questions to be asked and actions to be taken. So you can see here, like what are the steps of health impact assessment? It's very, very similar what you see. Screening, scoping, appraisal, reporting and monitoring when you take health impact assessment. And you see the phasing, uh, phases which you have like at the policy program level, stakeholders participation and policy implementation. Uh, and then what kind of steps are taken and what kind of questions are reviewed within this. So who should carry out screening, how to carry out screening, and then questions are like in the scoping stage, what is the geographical boundary of a health impact assessment, what is the timeline for health impact assessment, what skills are there in the team who needs to take the health impact assessment, and so on. So you have sets of questions which you look into, and then in the last column you can see the actions which have to be undertaken, like if in order to find out those answers, like you need to contact these stakeholders, and then in the scoping you have to define rules and uh, uh, connect with experts, and then the appraisal you need to have document review and uh, look at all those things, and then uh, at the last stage you need to com communicate about the uh, you health impact assessment. That is what we see that uh, initially we started focusing on the physical environment, then we started looking at uh, the 
uh, exposure to chemicals. And now we have come to health impact assessment, where we look at the overall health of the community with respect to not just the chemical exposure, but also from the policy and kind of intervention or development projects that takes place. So that was about our uh, one part. Now, uh, moving on to another uh, domain, we are going to look at the definitions and concepts. So uh, here we'll see like what we really mean about health when we say health. So uh, health, uh, if you look at, is a complex um, uh, and uh, health can vary with the societies, with the context, and we cannot have a very uniform standard. So what might be considered in one country, the similar problems might not be considered in the other countries or may not have the similar standards for the same health. And further, health is not just uh, the um, that you're ill or you're sick, but health also has a lot of meaning in terms of uh, the physical strength, the mental strength, the social well-being. So all these uh, is seen as health. So, uh, and then just not your individual capabilities, but also uh, your personal and environmental, economic and social factors, how they uh, create the environment for health. So um, uh, if you look at healthy people, uh, would be the people who are able to cope with everyday activities and to adapt to their surroundings. So in the diagram, you can see determinants of health ranging from individual lifestyles, which is influenced by social and community, and which further depends on the living and working conditions, which further influences uh, the socioeconomic, cultural, and environmental conditions. So you think of health condition in your city or in your village, think how it varies with in what conditions you live in, what is your age, what is your gender, culture, and what lifestyle you follow. So wherever you are, what the culture is, which condition you live in, that uh, what is your health condition would vary a lot and how do you see your health condition would also vary. So you look at the complexity involved and in the EIU process, the action that can be taken beforehand and the multidimensional factors one needs to look at. So you look at that complexity involved with health when we talk about health. So uh, in order to put health impact assessment, so uh, like in order to really put it into practice, uh, you need to uh, consider both health outcomes, uh, which means when we say health outcomes, uh, it means a specific type of illness and conditions such as infectious disease, uh, the range of chronic disease, injuries, uh, uh, nutrition-related conditions, and mental well-being. And uh, there's another term uh, where you look at health determinants. So health determinants are factors that influence the experience of health in the affected communities. So when I'm ill, uh, that's the outcome, but what is what kind of experience I go through because of that uh, my illness in particular context is the health determinant. So uh, that is how we understand health outcomes and um, health determinants, the difference between the two. So uh, since the subject is complex and it is also like you see how there are a lot of things, the context, the socioeconomic infrastructure policy, all that would be influencing it. So there'll be a lot of crossover overlap among discipline and you will need a lot of integration with the team. So when you have to do health impact assessment, you have to collaborate with uh, people from different domains. So here in the diagram, you can see how uh, EIA, social impact assessment and health impact assessment, there are so many domains which really uh, overlap. So you can see how health can overlap with your environment of waste management, hazard material, air quality, soil quality, water quality, human rights, public services, working conditions, natural resource use and availability, ecosystem services. And then uh, it would also uh, overlap with social, you have like uh, 
the public health, personal behavior, employment, demography, education, then also the environmental aspect, land and marine use, landscape, fishing and hunting, agriculture, indigenous people, energy and use. So you see how much the domain overlaps with each other. So what condition is there? What's the physical environment? What kind of impact it will have on health? What social environment is there? What kind of impact it will have? What it might lead to when any kind of impact happens? So um, as uh, like it's uh, frequently suggested that uh, when you're doing health impact assessment, you can create one separate chapter for health impact assessment in the report. And uh, the key idea is irrespective how you uh, make an independent report or you structure it within uh, all the chapters, uh, the key idea is that it should help the decision makers to look into the health aspects so that you have to take care that the purpose is resolved. So uh, while doing health impact assessment, you can give the information as the secondary uh, effect of the environmental assessment also. So uh, while you are uh, discussing in form of matrix on uh, human consumption of fish would appear in uh, EIA section on fish and fish habitat. So, uh, so it can also come out as a secondary impact as health. Uh, and then you can also express that like if with the consumption as like indirect impact also that can be shown. But uh, while you take this kind of approach, you have one problem that uh, all the information like you you'll be putting across health information. So the health information will spread across the report. So when you do that, uh, it will dilute the significance of any um, health uh, related things and uh, any information uh, done without the expert might also lead to diluted inferences. Like you might think that uh, you might conclude that uh, the impact would be negligible, whereas it might be uh, significant when you see it in a collective form. So uh, you can see that you can also provide a health impact assessment as a standalone document as part of or as part of EIA report also. So if you do this, uh, you have the benefit of uh, providing health information easily and facilitate discussion of health issues in a relation to one another. So that also you can do. Another approach which you can take is uh, have a standalone HIA technical uh, report. So the benefit of doing this is that all health issues can be completely evaluated. You may not be limited to the layout of EIA. So uh, that benefit is there. And But the drawback of this is that concerns of health may be not, uh, because it's a separate document, you might not receive considerable attention uh, in the EIA process. And uh, uh, if you know that EIA has to be made public, then health impact might not be made public because it's not part of the EIA disclosure. So uh, you can compose one chapter for a health impact assessment with an EIA report. And uh, the benefit uh, is that it allows you to understand the health concern. It also becomes a part of the decision making process. Uh, but that also has its limitation that uh, you might have to stick with the format of EIA. So mostly uh, it is said that the first approach where you spread across the chapter or you can have one chapter as a EIA is uh, health impact assessment is considered as very practically feasible option. So you, it's up to you or your team how you adopt. You can adopt any approach. But it is important that you maintain strong integration between the health and the other discipline uh, while you're dealing with EIA. So uh, uh, it's uh, good that you undertake integrated approach from the beginning of the assessment procedure itself while you're gathering data, when you're uh, doing analysis. So you look into all the aspects so that all you have to take care of while you're doing health impact assessment along with EIA. So now let us uh, see who all are considered while undertaking health impact assessment. There is a concept of inside the fence and outside the fence. So in case of uh, uh, health impact assessment so far, when we were looking at uh, all other domain, we generally took the area where our uh, project area was and with certain radius. But in case of health, uh, uh, you might 
have to look into whether you're going to look into the study area or out uh, within the project area or uh, outside that project area. So uh, while looking at uh, while undertaking health impact assessment, health impact assessment looks into population who live, work or play in the communities near to or potentially affected by the project outside the project area. So while we do our HIA, we really look outside the project area and not the people who are working for the project. That's a different domain altogether. But here you look at the people outside the project area and who are not involved in your project. So people who are dealing uh, with the industries who are working, so uh, occupational health and safety takes care of those aspects. But the practical challenge is that sometimes this inside outside fence boundaries are not very clear uh, in terms of how you will discriminate between them. For example, um, uh, you uh, uh, like uh, any interventions which you do for preventing malaria for workers might need large area level area to work on. And also sexually transmitted infections can originate from inside the fence workforce. So the workforce which is inside can also infect with the sexually transmitted infections. So the idea under HIA is to evaluate what kind of impact will happen because of the project proposed project on the local community. So now moving on, uh, the next segment. Uh, we'll look at the uh, screening and scoping stage for health impact assessment. Uh, we see that a health impact assessment is also very parallel to EIA. So you have similar like screening, scoping, baseline, community profile, assessment, mitigation, enhancement, and monitoring. So in screening, you define uh, if HIA is required or not, and then in the scoping, you plan out the uh, how you're going to undertake health impact assessments, what all things will be covered. And then in the baseline uh, data community profile, you gather data to understand the baseline health and environmental condition of the community. Then in the assessment, you identify impacts to health and distribution of effects. Then uh, in the mitigation and enhancement, you develop strategies to minimize the health harm which your project Will, uh, will cause no matter what kind of interventions you'll take and then how you can maximize the health benefits and then how you're going to monitor uh, the effectiveness of health impact assessment and track changes over time. So th that is what you will see here. So here uh, we see uh, what are the different approaches taken in the uh, by International Finance Corporation and International Council of Mining and Metals. We'll see here. So they provide a framework um, for uh, identifying health outcomes and health determinants. And uh, so we see the two approach here. So here we are looking at uh, health area categories, which is given by uh, IFC. So here you see that uh, they are defining with the health outcomes. So you can see the health area, vector related disease, and then uh, such as malaria, cystosomiasis, dengue, and so on. And then you see respiratory and housing issues, or acute respiratory infections, pneumonia, tuberculosis, and so on. And uh, you see uh, veterinary medicine and zoonotic issues, sexually transmitted infections, soil and water and sanitation related disease. So uh, you see IFC identifies health concerns with uh, health outcomes. Likewise, you see food and nutrition related issues, uh, which are like stunting, wasting, anemia, micronutrients, disease, change in agriculture and subsistence, hunting, fishing, gathering and practices, accidents and injuries. You can see health area where road traffic related spills and re release construction uh, spills and releases you will see construction and drowning will happen so all these health impact you can see the another area you can see exposure to potentially hazardous material pesticides fertilizer road dust and so on then you have social determinants of health sdh 
the psychological, social production of disease. Then you have cultural health practices, role of traditional medicine providers, indigenous medicines and unique cultural health practices. So what, uh, so those categories are there. Then you also see health service infrastructure and uh, capacity. Then you have non-communicable diseases. So that was uh, uh, from IFC. Now we're going to look at from categories provided by International Council uh, on Mining and Metals. So uh, here you see what are the health outcomes they identify. So here uh, they look at the infectious disease, chronic disease, nutritional disorder, physical injury, mental health and well-being. So there are examples also put for those health outcomes. And now uh, they also provide guidelines for modifiable determinants of health. So you are looking at the health determinants. So the health determinants include individual and family, like their uh, physiological condition, behavioral condition, social economic circumstances. Like if you look at the physiological conditions like the vaccination status, what's the nutrition level, what's the behavioral aspects like the lifestyle and daily routine, physical activity, use of tobacco, alcohol and so on. And socioeconomic circumstances like what's the income and wealth, what's the education and learning, employment and economy. And then you look at uh, other environmental aspect, the physical housing, how is the housing scenario, what's the transport, what's the exposure to chemicals, agriculture and food supply. And then you look at uh, the associated other uh, areas like you have uh, determinant social which includes community infrastructure, crime and safety, then you also have employment and economy, then you also have institutions and policies which also influence so institutions involving social care, what kind of care, what's the policy services, emergency services, how are they in any given context and then the policies about governance, public policy, industrial health, what kind of policies there, how it controls the environment. So uh, that's about when you do uh, scoping, you also identify according to the different categories. So we saw how you have different categories based on the health outcomes and then also health determinants. So now moving on, we're going to look at the baseline community profiling. So when we do baseline, uh, this is the third step we're looking at, screening, scoping and baseline. So uh, here, the key purpose is to develop a baseline uh, profile, community profile, in order to uh, categorize current conditions relevant to health for the affected people. So we set up what is the current health conditions. So uh, for this purpose, the kind of information which you need is like you look at the demographic information, uh, what's the population size, what's the, uh, how is the age distribution, how is the gender distribution, and then you look at uh, in uh, different information on the health outcomes, like uh, what's the life expectancy, rates of specific disease, rate of injury, and so on. And then you look at uh, health-related behavior, smoking, physical activity, and all. So the range, what we saw that. So when you do the profiling, you look at all those aspects here. And then plus, you also look at uh, social, environmental, and institutional determinants, which we discussed about the housing, healthcare, services, income, and education. So you also evaluate those aspects. So uh, those aspects are seen here. So uh, within um, health impact assessment, HIA, uh, you prepare the uh, community profile, and uh, it has uh, several purpose. Like it's helpful to you, it will help when you will do the community profiling, when you will prepare this profiling, it will help you to understand uh, what is the nature of the population in that uh, the area where you are studying and what is the kind, uh, the size, the distribution of it, are people rich or poor, do they have facilities or not, what kind of institutional and environment is there and then the uh, another key idea here is to, uh, you should be able to measure uh, what kind of changes are happening so that uh, with your project you would be able to track that whether it's getting worse or it's improving the health conditions are improving. So uh, such kind of information like all these uh, information is important for accurate prediction and uh, it's important for uh, 
taking uh, mitigation measures also. So you can take an appropriate mitigation measure depending on the context and um, what kind of impact is happening. And then uh, it, all of these will also vary with the context. So you would understand a different country would have different social system, policy system, different industrial laws and all those infrastructures. So their conditions uh, would vary according to that. So uh, it also helps us when we do this, we also understand the burden of disease. So when we say burden of disease uh, is like how much uh, burden is there on any context health in uh, health care system uh, and how much it will be capable of uh, taking care of those things. So we, we saw so much during the COVID time, what kind of burden of the uh, pandemic was there on the existing health infrastructure. So uh, while you're looking at the burden of disease uh, in any kind of population, you mostly look into the chronic conditions like uh, you also check whether what kind of burden is there, well, what is consuming most of the infrastructure and energy. So it, is it like hypertension or cancer or they are uh, basic problems which are large scale problems like mosquito, bone illness, malaria, or it's a nutritional deficiency and so on. So you also need to understand the character of burden which is there on the system. So uh, you also need to understand what kind of healthcare system is there in particular context. And this is very important for ensuring that the project does not uh, uh, worsen the uh, current scenario. Uh, but it improves the health. And this uh, particular community profiling also helps you to identify potentially vulnerable subsets, the group of people who are particularly vulnerable. So they can be infants, children, uh, women, uh, people with uh, disability, uh, people with food insecurity, and uh, also uh, different medical conditions. So it will help you to identify that. And then it will also help you to create a reference point to measure whether it's getting better or uh, it's getting worse off. There's one which we saw is about the community profiling, but uh, there's also uh, idea about baseline. So uh, uh, if we see pro community profile as per the definition uh, and the purpose, it's intended to create overall picture of the community's health. And it's created to help us understand the health context of the people who are going to get affected. And the other is the baseline. And uh, this looks into uh, like looking at very limited information. And you would be only monitoring in uh, looking at the indicators uh, over time and uh, look at uh, what's really happening to those people. So uh, in practice, uh, uh, we see that community profiling is mostly used. Um, another important point, uh, which we have not seen in any other domain, is the ethical issues around health data collection. So whenever we deal with health data collections, uh, we have to deal with the ethical issues because there can be unique laws and issues which might come in, so which you have to abide by the contextual policies which are there. And you might, while collecting the data, might be interfering with the privacy and confidentiality of uh, uh, the people whom you are surveying. So uh, most of the time, health-related data are very co confidential and private. And data can be sensitive. And uh, for example, there can be HIV-related information, even uh, uh, immunization-related information, which can be used for discriminating among individuals uh, in, when they are hiring or traveling and so on. So uh, such kind of information can be sensitive and can be used against them. So one needs to uh, take care that it's not even accidentally released and you need to uh, have confidentiality uh, undertaking and uh, you need to abide by all the uh, legal aspects of it. You might have, to, for in order to take care of this, you need to uh, obtain ethics approval uh, from um, uh, whatever is the appropriate uh, institution or government setup which is there in your context. Then you have to get the consent of the people, whether they want to participate in your survey or not. And then uh, you have to ensure that you 
uh, do not use the collected data for any other purpose apart from the purpose you have mentioned. And then uh, you also do not collect anything extra than what you intend to analyze. And uh, whenever you present health data, so you do not disclose individual data or community data, but you present only aggregate data. So always talk in terms of aggregate information and you do not, by any mistake, um, uh, show individual data. So uh, other, uh, you also take care of avoiding any kind of individual identifiers like what's the name, date of birth and so on. So that has to be kept separate uh, while you're dealing with it. So that was about the privacy and ethical issues about the health. So now moving on, we'll look at the assessments for health impact assessment. So when we deal with assessments, um, we collect information from uh, various, various sources so that we can, uh, we can predict what kind of effect would happen of the, uh, from the project, um, what kind of health uh, concerns will be raised. So mostly the source of information is uh, the secondary source, which we have been talking about from the literature, uh, from the information sources, from uh, uh, like stakeholder groups, you can get it from the past project, from the case studies and so on. So uh, uh, while you're doing assessment, you will be looking at both uh, potential for positive health benefits as well as negative uh, health consequences, what might happen. So uh, potential adverse effects uh, uh, can be uh, uh, worked out like you can have uh, based on the exposure to the contaminants, uh, a decrease in the uh, subsistence food sources, uh, increases in sexually transmitted infections, uh, and uh, uh, because of the mobile workforces. However, when you deal with uh, positive health benefits, it's a little complex uh, with respect to identifying from the uh, project. So we see some of the examples of health benefits from the development projects. So when we are building, upgrading roads, so it reduces fertility and in injuries. Then you have occupational health strategies, so which reduces rates of infectious disease. Then... Uh, you have jobs and incomes, so multiple uh, physical and mental well-being outcomes uh, with in improved job and income. That were about the assessment. And now uh, looking at the mitigation and how you can improve and monitor health impact assessment. So uh, this can be done in form of management plans and it can also be done through the worker policy recommendations for the external agencies and other forms. So you also have good health practice principles which have to be adopted. That also leads to positive health consequences to uh, wherever the negative impact might happen, it's uh, advisable to avoid the impact altogether. And then the effort is to make to minimize the impact then uh, if that impact is happening, you need to repair the negative impact. And then in um, worst cases, you compensate people for impact. So that's what uh, approach strategy we have been seeing. So as a part of mitigation, we prepare a plan for monitoring, um, uh, which is developed. Now we we'll look into health, uh, human health risk assessments. So uh, the method uh, which is used to conduct human health risk assessment, HHRA, uh, it's very specialized and uh, it's very different from a health impact assessment. So we saw health impact assessment. Uh, now we're looking at human health risk assessment. So it's very specialized and it's very different. So uh, the purpose of uh, human health risk assessment is to look into the potential, what kind of exposure uh, uh, humans can have to the environmentally mediated chemical contaminants and to uh, predict the change in health risk that can uh, occur because of that kind of exposure to the contaminants. So uh, this HHRA uh, brings together like information on the population uh, which will be exposed and the kind of dose which they would be exposed to 
and uh, how toxic the substances are. And uh, based on that, it will provide an estimation on what kind of uh, human health impact will happen. So uh, you can uh, use HHRA to model increases in the number or rate of specific disease, like uh, what would be the increased uh, rate of cancer, respiratory disease, or uh, uh, it can be used for providing information to determine uh, the what kind of uh, uh, regulations we will have for exposure to certain contaminants. So that is uh, how it can be used. So if you look at uh, how you undertake HHRA, um, uh, you can have the uh, modeling approach, uh, which is uh, like again, uh, four steps. So in that, the, uh, you first undertake the hazard identification uh, and uh, where you identify in the given project what kind of chemical substance will be produced and what kind of potential they have to cause damage or harm to humans. Then you will look at the dose response. What is dose response? Information on that, like how human body reacts to what kind of exposure level. And then you will uh, look at what is the total uh, long-term, short-term exposure level is happening. And based on that, with the what, how frequently the exposure is happening, what frequency the exposure is happening, for how long the exposure is happening. Based on that, you will understand uh, who all are exposed, how much is the exposure, and that will help you to understand it. So uh, based on that, you would find out uh, uh, the risk, and then you would categorize those risks and draw conclusions from that. So uh, you have many, many countries have uh, uh, like uh, laws for this. Um, uh, we have already seen the range of laws in our context also. So uh, all uh, uh, they provide technical tools for HHRA and then the standards are also given there. Um, and uh, that would be a baseline for you, benchmark threshold to compare and see whether you are uh, exceeding that exposure level or dosage level. So uh, you will be looking at the guidance, all the technical tools, and then you will see the dosage exposure level, what kinds of regulations are there. And then uh, based on the exposure and dosage limitation, you would be deciding uh, what interventions have to be done or taken. So uh, these, uh, these were the four step things. So that's all what we have seen for today under the health impact assessment. So summarizing what we covered today, so we looked at how this health concern started and how our uh, approach towards handling it and the details of it uh, changed uh, in the health, uh, human health risk assessment. Then we looked at certain definitions and concepts and how it uh, overlaps with other domain. And then we looked at uh, what would be your study domain inside the fence or outside the fence. Then uh, we looked at various stages of screening, scoping, and then we also looked at the um, assessment for health impact assessment. Then we looked at some of the mitigation monitoring for health impact assessment. And then in the last, we looked at human health risk assessment process and tried to conceptually understand it. So that was the coverage for today. So this was our key reference. Further, our coverage has been limited as per the scope of the subject and additional resources to read and watch are provided to you. So you can look at a range of um, uh, videos and cases which I mentioned about. So you can see those here and you can um, uh, you get the link to the YouTube video from here and see all those cases. Uh, winding up, please uh, feel free to ask questions. Let us know about any concerns you have. Do share your opinions, experiences, and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you in discourse of EI. Thank you.